Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. I wanted to do something a little different for this video series. I thought that maybe I could make it a little more informal and just give you an overview of Blender that's specifically directed toward AI developers. And by AI developers, I mean people who want to use Blender to create 3D models and then either use those 3D models in their AI projects in simulators, so like Unity or Unreal Engine, or use those 3D models as part of 3D renderings that you'd create in Blender. So I just wanted to start off with some of the very basics of Blender, sort of the interface, just to get you familiar with it and help you decide whether it's the right tool for you. And I'll try to keep these to only a few minutes per topic so that it's easy to you know, go through them and that I stop myself from rambling too long about any one particular topic. So with that, I'm going to spend the next five or so minutes talking about uh, basically the interface and how to change views a bit. So the first thing I want to point out is down here in the corner, uh, I've turned on a plugin for Blender that will show you what I'm doing with my mouse and my keyboard. So if I, for example, hold down my middle mouse and sort of orbit around, you can see that that is how I am orbiting the focused item. And if I scroll my mouse wheel, you can see down here that I am scrolling my mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And finally, if I want to pan the view, I can hold down shift and middle mouse click and hold that down so that I can sort of pan. Now there's a few other ways to do this. So Blender has really improved their UI in the last few years. And so even if you forget these shortcuts, there are some other ways to get around. So first of all, I wanna point out this helpful gizmo up here. It shows you the different axes and the directions that they are going. So. You have the green axis. That is the Y axis. The red axis is the X axis. And the one you cannot see is the Z axis. That's the blue one. And so blue being Z is up. And you can see that sort of there's this flat plane here. It's not an object. It's just indicating that we are on the Z is zero. And then Y goes in the positive direction this way and X this way. How do I know that? Because the X and Y are pointing in those directions here. And if I orbit around using the middle mouse, you'll see that that gizmo moves. Now there's some other helpful things right here. You can click and drag on this and it will zoom in on whatever you're focused on. You can click and drag this and it will pan around like that. And you can click on this and that'll actually do your camera view. So that's not terribly useful for basically anything that you're doing where you're going to export your model to another program, but if you're going to be doing 3D rendering in Blender, it's quite helpful. So then you can just click out of it. And this last one is actually perspective versus orthographic. And if you've never really worked in 3D before, perspective is where you see these lines, they sort of go toward a vanishing point. This is a term that is used in art and in 3D modeling and probably drafting. Uh, so the idea is that everything sort of goes to a single point on the horizon. And then if you click this, this is orthographic. And that might look pretty jarring to you when you've like switched between them. But what it does is it gives you a sort of a different view on things. So if I have a different one of these, I'm going to do a, something that you don't need to follow along or anything, but I'm going to shift D to duplicate this. And if I move this along the X axis, you'll see that these appear to be the same size. It's not useful for everything, but it can be quite useful for certain modeling. I generally keep it off, but I just wanted to point that out. So what we have here, let's ignore, ignore this for a minute. I'll talk about how to delete things in a sec. What we have is the default scene, and we have a camera and a light and a cube in the center. And if we want to work with things in this scene, it's very helpful to be aware of all the different ways that you can sort of see them, so to speak. 
all the different ways we can get information about these objects. So the first thing I'll point out is that you just have your visual display here. And you can view this from different angles. So right now I've kind of got this perspective view. But if I want to see it from, say, the side here, viewing it from along this x-axis, I can click here. And now you'll see that I have the Z pointing up, the Y is pointing to the right, and you can't see the x-axis because I, the camera, not this camera, but the sort of the viewpoint is from on that x-axis. So this is in orthographic mode. This is one of those cases where it's very helpful to have orthographic because if you switch into perspective, well, it doesn't make much sense to be located like that because you need to be able to see these shapes. I won't go any further down that tangent. You can also view it from, you know, the y-axis or the z-axis. Now, the other way to view these, once you, once you want to out of there, you can just sort of uh, middle mouse out. You can also use your number pad on your keyboard. So, for example, the one key is equivalent to viewing this from the front, which is the same as clicking on that y. So like if I click on Y, oh, well, actually, it turns out that's the back. So if I, if I click on this, it's the back. If I click on this, it's the front view. Three on your number pad will be the right view, and seven is the top view. So they all look pretty much the same on this cube, but you'll see now that I'm looking down on that camera and that light so you can get a different perspective on things. So that's basically what you need to know about views. The only other thing maybe worth mentioning right now is that if you click on an object that isn't in focus, so like this one is the focused object right now. If I scroll in and out, it's zooming in on this object. Even if I put my mouse over top of this and scroll, it doesn't zoom in on it. But if I want this to be my centered object, if I want to focus on this, I can hit the period key on my number pad, and that will focus on that object. And there's another way to do that. Uh, I believe it's in the, let's see, view uh, frame selected. So if I were to click on this and go to frame selected, it zooms in right there. And there's finally one other option, and it's the key that's right next to the one on my normal keyboard. Right below the escape key, right above the tab key, kind of on the far left top corner, and it's this sort of like tick symbol right here or right below the tilde uh, on my keyboard. And this allows you to do all of these different things too. So you can view it from the top, you can view selected, you can see it from the right. So all those same objects all show up right there. So that's sort of the viewports. That's what I wanted to show you with those. I also wanna show you what's happening over here briefly. So we have a scene collection. These are the three different objects in our scene, and you'll see as I click on them, then it's selecting them in the scene. There's some more to this, but I won't go into it for now. Just know that that's sort of a different way of, a high level way of seeing what's in your scene. You also have some stuff here. I want you to ignore this for now. These top ones aren't relevant to the object, but the ones down here and below, this sort of yellow box thing, the object properties and below, those do affect the object that is selected. So you'll see that this is positioned at 0, 0, 0, and it's not rotated at all, and the scale is just a uniform 1. If you click on this one, you can see that this one is actually located somewhere else. You can see it's located at like 4, 1, 5, so 4 in this direction, 1 in the y direction, and 5 up. And then you have rotation as well. There's some other stuff here. I don't want you to worry about that for now. But just know that there is information about these things. I guess I will point out one other thing. Like when I click on this, this has some camera properties. It has some light properties if I click the light. And this one, it has some uh, vertex properties and things. So that's just something to be aware of. That's another way to view information about things. And uh, the final thing that I haven't shown is this menu right here. You can either click on that little arrow or use the N key to sort of toggle it in and out. And this is where you can also see your location, rotation, scale, and dimensions. So we'll be doing a lot more with these, but I just want to show you really quick. If I were to move the position of this, 
I can actually click and drag in here and you can see that by changing this, it reflects in the viewport. So I think that's long enough for this video, so I'm gonna wrap this up, but hopefully this has been a helpful sort of introduction to the viewports that will be relevant to you as you're starting out Blender.